Okay, so we're going to look at a optical device and how it operates. And that device is a concave lens. And so fundamentally, lenses operate on the principles we've already been talking about with light. The first being that light travels in a straight line. And we're going to use the ray diagram process to describe how a concave lens works. And so we're going to make that assumption that light is behaving like a particle and traveling in a straight line. The second is that idea of refraction. So when light hits a barrier, a boundary, it changes direction. It's refracted. And how that, those two items together give rise to the behavior of a concave lens. All right, so let's first of all define what a concave lens is. Concave is its shape definition. It describes what the lens looks like. And a concave lens has the surfaces of the lens bowing inward. It has sort of this hourglass shape, a cave type shape on that surfaces, surface of the lens. But like I mentioned with our convex lens video, the concave lens also has an operational definition. What it does to light when it refracts it through its surfaces. And that is that it diverges the light. So a concave lens is also what we call a diverging lens. And so let's look and see what that means and why light behaves that way. Why does a diverging lens work the way it does? Diverging meaning spreading the light rays apart. They're diverging from each other. So to do that, we are going to kind of look at a just portion of that surface blown up. So here is that little piece of the lens surface kind of blown up. And we're going to use a light ray that's coming in. I'm going to draw it horizontal to the where I am drawing because that makes it easier for me to draw. All right, so here we have a light ray hitting this surface that's curved in that inward concave way. Now when light hits a surface, what does it do? Well, it refracts if the index of refraction, if the optical density is different between the two boundaries. And in this case, we're going to assume that the outside here is air and the inside we're going to say it's a glass lens. Okay, so as the lens hits it, we're going from an area of low index of refraction to an area of high index of refraction. We know the N of air is less than the end of glass. The index of refraction, the optical density of glass is higher. So we know that light bends away from the normal when it goes from low to high. So let's look at, I'm sorry, not away from the normal, it bends towards the normal when it goes from low to high, always towards the normal, gets bent. All right, so let's look at the normal. And we look at the normal at the point of incidence. And so we have to draw our tangent line, now that we have a curved surface, to identify what the normal is at the point of index. Incidence. And so we draw our tangent line, and then we draw a normal to that line. Now, if the ray of light were not hitting a boundary, it would just continue on straight. But it does hit that boundary from low index to high index, so it bends towards the normal which is in that direction. And we see that as this light ray enters into the lens, it's deviated in the upward direction. So here I am at the top of the lens as I've drawn it, and my ray of light is bent in that upward direction. Well, what about at the bottom of the lens? What if I took a picture here at the bottom? So there's a blow up of my curve lens at the bottom. Well, let's do the same thing. I'm going to use a parallel ray of light because it's easier for me to draw. And it hits that boundary between air and glass. So once again, I have to draw my tangent at the point of incidence. And then I have to draw my normal relative to that tangent. If my ray of light was not going to hit a boundary, it would just continue on straight. But it does hit that boundary. And between low and high, my light is bent 
towards the normal, which is in that direction. And so my ray of light coming into the bottom of the lens is bent further towards the bottom. And we can see right away that as I'm entering the lens, these two rays of light are spreading out. They're getting further apart from each other. Does the same happen as they leave the lens? And we'll just look at the top. Okay, so we're gonna look as it leaves the lens. Now, it's much more easy for me to draw a parallel ray of light. So I'm going to do that because it's just a little bit easier for me to visualize it, to draw it. So here I am coming into, that is a pretty curved lens, but I'm coming into the lens. One of the rays of light that gets bent at the beginning is gonna come in to the leaving part horizontal as I've drawn it. So once again, I have to draw my tangent. And then I have to draw perpendicular to that tangent. Hitting it really uh, perpendicular, come on. All right, so there's perpendicular to the tangent. If the ray of light, and I hit it really right at the close, so if the ray of light was going to not have a barrier, it would just continue straight. Now I'm going from a high index to a low index. So I will want to bend away from the normal. That's the normal, bending away is in that direction. So my ray of light continues to bend in that upward direction as it leaves the lens. So similarly, we're gonna see that happen at the bottom. So as light rays in the top come in, they're deflected upward. As light rays come into the bottom, they're deflected downward. And my rays of light spread out. So let's look at that with a whole series of light coming in to this diverging lens, this concave lens. It'll also give us some vocabulary for our optical devices. Vocabulary that, if you've watched the convex lens video, is very similar. So, we are going to represent this concave lens as a single line. The type of lenses we're looking at are what are known as thin, so very thin, the rays of light don't get all messed up inside. And spherical, meaning the curve on one side matches the curve on the other side. So you can imagine that there is indeed the curved surface, but we can model that as just a simple line where the refraction happens at that point. Now, if I bisect the lens perpendicular, I get what is known as the optical axis. And that's gonna be a good reference for us as we move into image formation in lens. Ziz, in lenses. All right, so here's our concave lens. Now I'm gonna draw a couple of these parallel rays of light. On the top, and a couple of them on the bottom. All right, and we said that a parallel ray of light will be bent as it comes through the lens. Coming in the bottom, it'll be bent in the downward direction. Now, how much of the downward direction is going to depend on how much refraction occurs? Similarly, how much in the upward direction will depend on how much refraction occurs. And since the curve of the lens, where the light ray hits, that tangent line changes orientation how the light rays as we move down the lens bend a little differently. And how does that look? Well, these light rays are all gonna bend apart from each other. But if I take the ray, the refracted ray, and I imagine what it would look like if it was one solid line, I see that that refracted ray crosses the optical axis at a specific point. 
as I look at a ray of light refracted on the top, we know that it is bent in the upward direction. So these rays of light are separating from each other. But if I follow that refracted ray back, it too crosses the optical axis. And what do we notice? Those two rays of light are crossing the optical axis at the same spot. And indeed, that will happen with all rays of light that are parallel to the optical axis. They will be refracted in such a way that if I followed their path backwards, they would all cross the, the optical axis at a specific point. And that specific point is called the focal point of this lens. The distance between that point and the lens is called the focal length. So the distance between the focal point and the lens. And if instead of these rays of light coming from the left, they came from the right, I could do the same thing. And since the lens is, is symmetric, and since the refraction is dependent on that curvature, the focal point will be the same on the opposite side. So, whoops, that was green, I guess. So there's also a focal point on this side of the lens with an identical focal length. Now, what defines that focal point? Well, we often talk about defining that focal point as the shape, the curviness of the lens. So if I make a curvier lens, the angles of incident change for the same ray of light in a less curvy lens. So as I make the lens curvy, I change those angle of incidences. The refraction happens stronger, I get more bending, and I decrease the focal length. With more bending, these light rays shift up quicker, steeper, and as I draw that ray, ray back, we can see that it's going to hit that optical axis closer to the lens and thereby decreasing the focal length. A less curvy lens will increase the focal length by an analogous process. But you got to keep in mind that it's not just about the angle of incidence that causes the refraction or defines the, how much refraction occurs. It's also the difference between the two mediums. And lenses are defined with a certain focal length based on that curvature as if the medium was in air. So when we define the focal length of a lens, when, we, when it's stamped on it, when it's made, that's as if the lens is in air. But we want to make sure that we understand that if I move that lens into a different medium, let's say water, does the focal length change? And the answer is yes. Why is that? Because the difference in mediums also affects the refraction. And now, instead of air to glass, I have water to glass, things that are more similar in their optical density. And the more similar two items are in their optical density, the less refraction occurs. So as I go into water, I get less refraction, less bending, and my focal length increases. If I were to take the same lens up in space, where the optical density is even less of the atmosphere, the air we have on Earth, then I'm increasing the difference between the lens and the environment which it is in. And so increasing that difference, difference causes more refraction. And I'll change the focal length accordingly. So while we use a fixed focal length based on the shape of the lens, that is under the assumption that we are in our normal atmosphere. And we, it's an important element. The angle of incidence is dictated by that curvature. 
but we also want to remember that the medium is important. So if we change the environment, we have to pay attention to that as well. All right, so concave lenses, really quickly. They're shaped like an hourglass. They cave inward. They're also known as diverging lenses because the refractive properties of that shape causes light rays to spread out as they enter the lens. All right, good job.